Welcome back to Essentials Explained. My name is Luke and today I'm going to be talking about the best approach I've found to working with data sets. This will enable you to keep your data set clean and easily explainable to anyone else who might have questions about your data. If you enjoy this content, please like and subscribe. Otherwise, let's jump right into it. So let's talk about working with your data and the best practices to do so. So your two main priorities are going to be number one, is it explainable? And number two, is it repeatable? So let's start with explainable and understand why this is so important. A situation that may arise is your client, your manager may come to you and say, just looking through your analysis, some of these numbers don't look exactly right. Can you walk me through how you did this calculation? All right, so this is every analyst slash associate's worst nightmare where you, you kind of get the sweaty palms worrying you're, you messed something up here. My number one recommendation is if you can make your data very, very explainable, it's very easy to communicate to everyone else exactly what you did. And they'll trust you more with the data and be able to identify where data errors may have happened due to a miscommunication. Within any of these files, there's a number of different variations that could cause discrepancies within data. So for instance, take revenue. There's a lot of different flavors of revenue, right? Does it include discounts? Does it include returns or rebates? And so if you're just thinking about revenue, someone may have a different definition they're basing their information on. And so having the ability to communicate exactly what you've used and what you're trying to communicate is very important. And if you can walk someone through that process from start to finish, almost every single time, they will help you get to the right answer. The objective of any project or case is getting to the right answer. And so the easiest way to get to the answer is to have a process that is easily explainable so if there is a discrepancy, you can easily fix it and get to the right answer. So let's walk through a quick example of how you might communicate how you've set up this process so far. So this diagram is a really basic structure of how we did this analysis. This is more detailed than you would ever need to put together, but is showing the process in a way that I think about it and I think makes it easier to communicate how you did your process. So we started with the raw data and we joined our two lookup tables. We use the product lookup file and we use the customer lookup file. For our product lookup file, we joined based on the product type, which was the anonymized product name, product A through F. And for the customer lookup, we joined based on the store number, which was store one through a hundred. We transformed those into our working data and then summarized the revenue column with pivot tables and or sum if count if. And that is what is in our output table. So that was a really quick walkthrough of how we did this process and is hopefully a good example for how you can communicate your process in a structured, clear way to someone who is not as familiar with the data. Number two priority is repeatable. So why is this? Why do we care if our models are repeatable? So let's look at another situation. Let's say your manager or client comes in and says, hey, we just received the updated financials for September. I know we only had this through August. Can you rerun your analysis for the meeting this afternoon? So this is something that happens pretty frequently and most managers will expect you to be able to update a model or existing data file pretty quickly. Setting your model up to be repeatable is very important and will be very beneficial to help you in the long run. Your manager is also going to ask you how long they expect this to take. And this is not just specific to this one exercise, but more general estimation of time of task, which is something I think every manager will ask a subordinate for. One tip here make sure you are overestimating. And so I think a lot of people sometimes get worried that they're gonna get pegged for sandbagging and for building in too much buffer time into their exercises. And so I would highly, highly encourage you to take your best estimate of whatever you think this task will take you and multiply it by three. And that is not an exaggeration and that is not me saying 
you know, take some exorbitant numbers so you don't have to work all day. But generally three is probably the right amount, especially if you're pretty new. If you think this exercise or, or update in your file is gonna take you 15 minutes, I would suggest you say it's gonna take you 45 minutes. Because one, it will take you longer than you realize because something is gonna happen that you did not foresee and you're gonna to have to fix that. And so building in that buffer time will enable you to always hit your deadline. And number two, it's always going to be better to under promise and over deliver than over promise and under deliver. So when we look at our situation, if let's say it takes you 30 minutes, you can either be a rock star and send it to your manager and say, Hey, look at how fast I am. I'm amazing. Or you can take that time back and you know, do some additional work you need to do. Building in that additional buffer time will not be a detriment to you and will actually be very, very helpful because you'll be meeting expectations much more consistently, which is more important than having the fastest ability to do anything. Thank you for watching this video on best practices when working with data. If you're interested in more videos in this series, in the next video, we're going to be covering an index match match or a way to look up not only your rows, but also your columns linked here. If you've liked this content, please like subscribe and leave any feedback below.